Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, a time to highlight a growing community that keeps America's finest city thriving. Fox 5 is putting the spotlight on leaders making an impact for AAPI communities and history that's filled with inspiring stories of determination, passion, and dignity. These are the stories we are sharing with you right now. Hello and welcome to our celebration of Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I'm Eric Richards. And I'm Liberty Zabala. We are proud to be able to share our culture, the diversity and tradition so deeply rooted in our community. So we start with a deep dive though into one of the most popular areas here in San Diego, the Convoy District, how it has transformed through the years with an exciting new future right around the corner. Driving down Convoy Street in Kearney Mesa, Asian culture is abundant, a hot spot for dining and dessert. Some calling it the heart of San Diego's nearly 450,000 member Asian and Pacific Islander community. But getting here took time. I don't know that Asian Americans flocked to this hub initially really as a, a plan necessarily within the city. I think we, when you look at the history of uh, the city of San Diego and sort of how communities have formed, this was a place that probably was seen as being less desirable. Over the years, it's clearly transformed, now officially designated as the Convoy Asian Cultural District. You may have noticed these freeway signs popping up along the 805. Over 300, over 350 Asian-owned businesses in this Convoy corridor alone, so there's definitely more outside of that, but it's one of the largest pan-Asian hubs in Southern California. And now you can add housing to the mix, a first for this cultural hub. Kearney Mesa updated its community plan back in 2020, uh, which now allows for housing up and down on Convoy Street, and that's going to be one of the biggest factors, I think, moving forward in the next uh, two decades. Councilmember Kent Lee says to expect a more than 500-unit apartment complex to take over this lot. It's the old Dixie Line lumber right off of Raytheon and Convoy, making it an area that pretty much now has everything. It's going to really create this atmosphere of people being able to eat, drink, uh, play, but also live. This dish right here is our braised a spicy short rib, super popular, very large in size. Just down the street, you'll find Wumiak, authentic Korean food owned by Chris Liang. We knew the demographic and we were part of the demographic and so the street really called for us and, and we felt really comfortable opening up businesses here. In fact, business is so good here, Liang has three restaurants along Convoy, opening his first in 2015. So if one thing is for sure and picture clear, this cultural district is thriving with housing now blended in. It's creating this new hub for budding like entrepreneurs to want to be part of. And in the future, what we're really excited about is finally people are going to be able to live in the neighborhoods. Thank you, Eric, for that story. Not far from the Convoy District is a group of college students winning awards for their singing. Our Christina Adencial introduces us to their unique sound. Listen carefully. On a late Monday night, a sweet blend of voices echo through the Pepper Canyon Lecture Hall at University of California, San Diego. <laughs> And if you listen carefully, your ears will pick up a fusion of South Asian and Western music influences. We grew up listening to Indian classical music or Indian film music, Indian folk music, um, and kind of tying that in with our um, Asian American heritage. So we kind of mix that with pop music, R&B, jazz. <laughs> This unique sound that won this a cappella group second place at the Southwest Region International Championship of Collegiate a cappella last year. Meet Sitare, UC San Diego's premier award winning South Asian a cappella team. Sitare means stars in Hindi. The student run group of 14 singers is one of nine a cappella teams on campus. We're part of a larger Desi a cappella circuit, and this is a circuit consisting of a bunch of different South Asian fusion teams across the country. And so this is kind of a new and up and coming genre of a cappella music. <laughs> 
acapella was something I'd never heard of before, let alone South Asian acapella. Tejas Krishnan is a fresh addition to the team. The freshman is taking up biochemistry with a 13-year background in Indian classical music. I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. I auditioned and it's and they're like, oh, you, you're selected for callbacks. I'm like, oh, great. And then I'm at callbacks and then they're like, oh, do you want to join the team? I'm like, Yes, please. <laughs> Lori has been singing soprano with the group for the last four years. She majors in neurobiology and hopes to one day work with patients. And considering how demanding their majors are, both agree singing gives them an outlet to decompress. I don't think I would be able to do anything that I do without having that outlet of music. Really a way for me to express myself in a way that I guess STEM just does not doesn't allow for. Sitare takes pride in diversity from their multicultural members to the fusion of South Asian music genres. It's just a way to make it relatable to people to kind of show them that this is this is a piece of our lives. This is part of our heritage and um, we want to express it to you guys. <laughs> Christina Denzel. Fox 5 News. And what a unique sound indeed. We wish them the best of luck with future competitions. We're just getting started with our stories. Up next, talk about taking risks on and off camera. Sure, he's a big time stuntman now, but you'll never guess what he majored in college before landing in Hollywood. Then meet a local woman who made it her life's mission to increase Asian visibility in our community. Everything Everywhere All at Once broke records, racking up more than $100 million in ticket sales. The movie won seven Oscars, including Best Picture. And Michelle Yeoh was the first Asian woman to win Best Actress. And the film was released in March 2022, and it put veteran and new Asian actors into a rarefied spotlight. Asian representation in Hollywood has come a long way in recent years. It still has room to grow as movies like Everything Everywhere All at Once show that the AAPI community is bankable at the box office. Our Kathleen Bade rubbing elbows recently with a UC San Diego grad turned Hollywood stuntman. Here's his very unconventional path to stardom. Doesn't matter where I am, no one's dying tonight. Peter Jang has been kicking down doors as a stuntman, actor, screenwriter, and director in Hollywood for a decade now. But he didn't start out with aspirations of the big screen. He started here as an economics major at UC San Diego. And I, I went the business route, I got my economics degree. The economics building is just a half mile away from one of the most celebrated theaters in the country, the La Jolla Playhouse. But ironically, Peter didn't even step foot here. He didn't get the acting bug till he was asked to be an extra in a show being filmed in Ocean Beach. That pilot never made it to air, but it did change the trajectory of Peter's life, who had taken a job at a market research firm after graduation. And I was actually making more money as an extra than I was as a uh, you know, business development specialist at this firm. <laughs> and they're like, you'll never make it. Some 60 TV and movie credits later and his very own action figure, Peter has proven them wrong. I worked on Suicide Squad, The Last Ship, CIS Hawaii, Cleaning Lady. But proving himself, especially to his Taiwanese father, who wasn't thrilled with his career change, is something he's used to. Try it out. When you fail, come back and we'll figure out your real career. Um, but 
haven't failed yet. Being lit on fire for rush hour of the TV show. Ultimately, his dad did pay for his SAG card. But despite Hollywood's recent embrace of Asian actors, Peter still faces some unique challenges. There's also a little bit of a difference now, too, because now they don't want you to be a mixed race person. They want you to be full Chinese, they want you to be full Korean, full Japanese, for authenticity's sake. Peter says something else that's changing is the beauty standard. He says, unlike Asian women, Asian men were never thought of as attractive, something that affected him growing up. I grew up in Ohio, and uh, you know, it's a very, very, at least the place that I was in was a very, very Caucasian area. Some people in school would call me the Asian and stuff like that, you know, which was, you know, wasn't like outwardly racist per se, but other, one thing, it still made me feel like the other. Peter says it is good to be seen now and hopes generations who follow won't find show business as daunting to break into as he did. Because no matter what, this is the, the nature of this industry, there can only be so many people in front of the camera. So if that's something that you want to do, you have, it's going to be difficult. Know that there's challenges, but it is possible. Take the opportunity when it's, when it's here. And now is that opportunity. It, it's only going to get better from here. Peter launched his own production company, Simplicity Pictures, back in 2016 to help ensure that happens. Going into business, just like his dad wanted. I'm the product, I'm also the salesman, I'm also the bookkeeper, I'm also, you know, so like all the business stuff that I learned, it all translated directly into the film industry. And you can tell your dad, see, I'm using the degree. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen Bade, Fox 5 News. From one big name to another, our next story is about a local woman who spent decades speaking up for our Filipino friends. She even brought to life a popular San Diego summertime event. Our Maria Arcega Dunn sat down with this community leader about what drives her and what she's working on now. These were like tucked away. As a Filipino American, Joanne Field spent decades serving the community of San Diego and putting Filipino Americans on the map, literally. After the designation of State Route 54 as the Filipino American Highway, Fields was instrumental in renaming the Woodman Street overpass on the 54 it Leong Veracruz Bridge after two famous Filipino American labor activists. It's bridging that history that is not told or is not well known. The latest census has Filipinos as the second largest ethnic group in San Diego County, boasting a population of roughly 200,000. We're your neighbor. Our kids, our classmates. Yet Field says that Filipinos continue to struggle for representation. Our elected officials have to hear from us. They can't guess what we want. We have to ask and sometimes demand. And no matter the issue, Fields demands a seat at every table. For doing that. In partnership with lawmakers and law enforcement, she's led public forums and even addressed API hate. <laughs> On July 31st, 2021, Fields organized the first Filipino Friendship Festival along the Embarcadero. The event brought thousands together in San Diego to learn about the culture and contributions of Filipino Americans. The event was so successful, it prompted city and state leaders to name the day after Fields. We have to create these events. We have to develop our curriculum and make it visible and work with those that know the story. Fields acknowledges Filipino voices and visibility are growing, but she says the community's change-making potential remains largely untapped. So today, she heads up a nonprofit, the API Initiative. Her goal, to educate the public and continue to uplift generations of Filipino Americans and Pacific Islanders to come. We're able to teach the community about that history and our contributions into American history. Maria Arcegadon, Fox 5 News. Field says we've made great strides in AAPI representation in the city of San Diego and the state of California. For instance, with San Diego's first mayor of color and of Filipino descent, Tan Gloria, and the 34th state attorney general, Rob Bonta, also of Filipino descent. Well, life, liberty, and the pursuit of justice. Coming up, we talk to a San Diego native who went from the Navy to being top boss of the local FBI.
I'm Liberty Zabala, and you're watching Fox 5 celebration of Asian American and Pacific Islander heritage. Our next story was one of my favorite assignments. For the first time at FBI San Diego, the Bureau is led by an Asian American. Stacy Moy grew up right here in San Diego and spoke to me about his heritage and how he became top boss at our FBI. What is your most uh, memorable mission of the FBI where you thought, this is why I'm here? Well, we have so many of those, actually. Uh, FBI Special Agent in charge Stacy Moy was instrumental in the takedown of... We were able to capture the top 10 fugitive uh, for the FBI. Operations that could inspire the next action movie. But SAC Moy had humble beginnings as a kid from Solana Beach, a third generation Chinese American whose father worked for the Navy. As a Chinese American, I, I remember there not being too many uh, of folks that looked similar to me. Moy graduated from Torrey Pines High School and faced his own challenges of finding where he belonged. I was less interested in doing the, I guess, traditional Asian related things like uh, learning a musical instrument or doing uh, Chinese language school, which was super naive as a kid. At the time, I wanted to assimilate, right, to be someone uh, that was uh, seen as American at first. He found his fit in the Navy. What motivated me to go to the Naval Academy, to go to the military, is because maybe there was some chip on my shoulder. Maybe I'm not good enough. How do I prove my worth? How do I prove it uh, to others that I belong? He then joined the FBI as a special agent in 2004 and served on the SWAT team. He promoted to top leader leadership positions in Washington, D.C. and San Francisco before becoming special agent in charge in San Diego. During the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic, the Bureau saw a 77 percent rise of anti-Asian hate crimes from the year before. We have our own issues here locally yes, with this, um, AAPIs being targets of hate or violence. Um, how important is that issue to you absolutely. and what is the Bureau doing? I, I'd say that there's probably no more important passion issue that I, I feel uh, than that, that, you know, of hate crimes towards the Asian community, being a member of the Asian community. How important is it to reflect the community you serve? You are, uh, is this correct, the only AAPI SAC across the country, across the Bureau? Currently right now, yes. Of the special agents in the Bureau, according to your 2022 numbers, 20, a little over 20% are ethnic, mm -hmm. and then of that, a little over 3% are AAPI. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, those numbers are way out of whack with uh, where we should be. SAC Moy's second in command is Assistant Special Agent in Charge John Kim, who is also AAPI. For me, it's been such a you know amazing moment and proud moment as a Korean American to be able to you know be in this position within the FBI. The, the face of the FBI is changing? Yes, I think so. But SAC Moy says the Bureau still has a long way to go, and he aims to leave here with a legacy of helping that change. I would want to leave this in a better place than I found it. The essence it really is leave things better than you found them. Special Agent in Charge Moy also pointed out that the Bureau has created diversity advisory committees to help improve and increase diversity within its ranks. Still ahead, do you know what a wax apple is? We're taking you to one of the largest farms in Southern California growing Asian fruits and vegetables, and you can walk right up and buy some for yourself. You're watching Fox 5 Celebration of AAPI Stories. I'm Eric Richards. Liberty, did our next story make you kind of hungry after watching it? It sure did. We found an exotic fruit farm right here in San Diego you'd never expect. Wait until you see all the tropical delicacies that you can walk right up to buy. Here's our Megan Healy with Uncle Happy Farmer. 
if you say in Taiwanese, Chan To Bear, means Uncle Happy Farmer. Everybody knows my name. <laughs> That's how most people know Frank Lin. This is called uh, Milk Guava. If I tell them Frank Lin, Oh, your name is Frank Dean? Benjamin Frank Dean? And I said, no, no, we are two words, not one word. <laughs> he is an inventor of this half acre exotic fruit farm nestled in coastal San Diego County. This, this is called a pineapple cherimoya, Taiwan da feng ni si jia. He knows what it takes to cultivate an abundant life. For Frank and his wife, Esther, the lessons begin in Taiwan. We both from the farm family, so we come up very good combination. I know how to grow vegetables. She knows how to grow uh, fruit trees. Frank moved to the States on an Ohio State University scholarship, then got a job as an engineer for the city of Carlsbad in California. That's where he planted his roots and started Green Lotus Organic Farm in 1980. But that time we don't have money to buy a house. So we find a piece of vacant lot. After five o'clock, I helped my wife to do that. And on weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and I deliver vegetable to the Chinese market. Then saving the money, pay the payment. In just three years, the land was theirs. But it took a while to grow plants like the wax apple. Taiwan rock lime wax apple, hei zuan si. Native to his homeland. The maritime San Diego weather is much like Taiwan, but the soil is different. These are all organic vegetables. So I asked my brothers, give me all the information in Taiwan, the soil type, uh, uh, pH value, and uh, uh, moisture. Then I keep trying and improve after five years. Now they're growing bigger and better. This bigger than my hand. His farm hand. You become a Mm, movie star, huh, Lucy? <laughs> Plays a big role in the garden. They poo on the, under the tree, so I don't need to sp spray the insecticide. I don't need to apply all the chemical fertilizer. Everything is organic. Frank started off with a single branch and a few seeds, and now his farm is thriving with 50 trees and more than 40 different varieties of these exotic fruit and vegetables. And he gets thousands of visitors a year to get a taste of Taiwanese culture and to learn how to grow these rare fruits and vegetables themselves. Like a first generation immigrant to, to this country, they eat all these fruits. They remember when they are in Taiwan, they are so appreciated. Then they bring their kids here to learn how to grow these uh, fruits and vegetables. Money doesn't grow on trees, but there's happiness in the harvest. They produce so many fruits and I can share with a friend and my neighbors. That's my happiness. In Carlsbad, I'm Megan Healy with Uncle Happy Farmer. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate all that diversity within the AAPI community. We hope you enjoy the stories and learn something as well. I'm Eric Richards. And I'm Liberty Zabala. If you want to watch these stories again, they'll be on our website at fox5sandiego.com. See you next time.